Jack and Bev Sparrick work side by side in the care of their cattle and their land. Sparrick Livestock is a first generation outfit that Jack started in 1964. Now they move their cattle between four ranch locations in California and Southern Oregon. For us, it works a lot better to go from winter range in the San Joaquin Valley of California to summer range in the, in the high country. Uh, we don't have to do any farming, we don't have to raise any hay. It's a good place to raise cattle just because of the kind of forage that we have here and uh, the fact that we're able to use it as a summer grazing operation along with a winter grazing operation in California. And the grasses here are very strong, the cattle do, do real well. Sparrick Livestock operates on about 85,000 acres with a mix of owned, leased, and forest service lands. One area of focus is restoring streams. To do so, they've built rock check dams, carefully timed the grazing of riparian areas, reestablished native willows, and more. One thing that we've done is we put in a lot of off-stream watering system, a lot of solar, solar pumps, and uh, redistributed the water away from the sensitive areas away from the creeks. We find that the cattle would rather travel a ways to go drink out of a clean water trough than climb down a stream bank to get a drink out of the creek. This is a great nesting area for wildlife habitat um, and it just protects the whole riparian area here around the water base. We have seen better water quality, better wa water quantity. Uh, the streams instead of being deep wide streams are beginning to become deep narrow streams, but deep water-wise, not deep bank-wise. And that's our goal. Jack and Bev work with a variety of conservation partners to restore streams, control invasive juniper trees, and improve fish and wildlife habitat. The upland habitats are improving both where we've done the juniper projects and, and outside of those. It's a, it's a change in a more structured cattle management scenario that's actually benefiting the wildlife populations. They also pay close attention to the condition of their rangeland, rotating cattle frequently so the grass has time to put out new growth. When you come right down to it, what we're doing is marketing our grass, our forage through cattle. I mean, if we don't have good grass and clean water, we're not going to have very, very productive livestock. They are conscientious grazers, don't just dump the cows and leave them. They are, uh, have deferred grazing in certain fields uh, that are where they know that there's ground nesting birds. The upland game birds, uh, they need the, the insects, they need the seeds, and they need open areas that are grazed to be able to forage. So it's a win-win for both wildlife and for the livestock grazing. Perhaps most impressive, Jack and Bev and their partners in the Bar One Ranch led the way in California's Sierra Valley by putting in place a conservation easement. We put a conservation easement on that ranch in 2002. We were the first ranch in the valley to do that. Since then, several of our neighbors have have done the same thing. We had development potential, subdivision potential on that ranch as it's only 35 miles from downtown Reno. We're in the cattle business. Uh, we're not in the development business. There was a subdivision map on that ranch for over 700 homes and we just didn't have a vision of having 700 homes on that kind of good rangeland. The ranch like this, it's a little over 13,000 acres, is preserved uh, forever and, and it will always be a ranch and be left in open space and, uh, and as well as a ranch and, and habitat. With one ranch protected, the Sparricks then helped found the Oregon Rangeland Trust and placed an easement on their Drews Valley Ranch. Now two ranches in two states totaling more than 24,000 acres are under permanent protection. For Jack and Bev, that means their legacy and love of the land will live on. Bev and I are both uh, deeply concerned about caring for these ranches and, and our stewardship programs and uh, we like what we're doing, we like the way it's working for us and we encourage our neighbors to do the same thing. It does give us a good feeling to know that they'll remain cattle ranches. That's what's near and dear to our hearts and hopefully will be a good potential for our family down the road to stay in the cattle business.
I love ranching. I love the cattle business. The worst thing I could think of would be get up in the morning with nothing to do. And by the same token, uh, when I'm gone to the wild blue yonder, I'm expecting my children and grandchildren to be involved in running these ranches the same way.